I make my living now as a musician and a singer. Uh, for five years, I was threatened with two years in jail, or, or, or maybe and as well, a bill of 12 million, 600,775 euros. I was faced with a council or a local government, as they're called in other places, that had no respect for my language or for my music, for the Irish language or for our Hiberno English, for our sports. So I let myself be guided by whatever bit of wildness I have. <laughs> I was born and raised in a small village about 40 miles from here called Balnebuck. In 1841, it had 234 people living in there. Now there's hardly a dozen. So why are people being moved out of those villages into the nearest towns and cities against their will? It makes no sense. She enrolled in Machiat Hanga, Agassa Sara, had a Mahena Nurit. Irish is my first language, I can express myself better in that idiom. I learned my English from the television, mainly from the cowboys and Indians. I tell people I learned my English from the cowboys and my maybe free spirit from the Indians. <laughs> well, it may not be too far from the truth. The village was like all other villages all over Ireland, close knit farmers, where the unifying Motto was, we live in one another's shadow. They were there for you in times of need, you were there for them. They helped you with the harvest, you helped them. So last year, to show the amount of people that had lived in my village in 1841, I made 234 white crosses. And I placed them in the field. And uh, in the middle, I placed 14 red ones. But the minute I had the first one made, I realized I was holding something that represented my forefathers. And when I drove them in the ground, it was as if they had come up and said, Thank you, this is the first time ever that our existence has been acknowledged. There were 11 children in my grandfather's family, all but one emigrated to America. My grandfather returned in 1902. How I feel about my language is expressed in a poem recent, written recently by a great poet that we have back there called Dorib Nichned. Brahmi lubna vokal urhin trim, briarna drav alaurin tang or shinshir, mi nin shi hain unin choregle han aal, no brashtin tidy grene. Lana Baha, Brahim Rian Tangan, Nofil Mini Gumid, Akavul Shion, Barbrahmi. Fifteen years ago, I was involved in a documentary uh, recording a traditional singer from uh, Tory Island of Tirchonel in, Dun in Donegal. My role was to interview her. I sat in front of herself and her brother and her neighbour for about ten minutes and I couldn't understand one word they were saying. So I had to get a little so late from that county to conduct the, 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 the interview on my behalf. Well, I left that place so proud of this rich tradition that's still there. I, a native speaker from Corcoghreen in West Kerry, and I go a couple hundred miles up north to Tir Chonel in Donegal, and I can't understand my own language. That's the richness of tradition that we are losing. As Irish and as Europeans, and dare I say as equals with indigenous people from all over the world, we're aware of our past. It's what creates what we are today, and it prepares us to imagine the future for the next generations. There's a saying in, in a country in Africa called Liberia that goes, when an old person dies, a library burns down. You can only imagine the size of the library when a family dies out, when a village, a community. And remember, when it dies out, it's next to impossible to rekindle. Mun will meet sauce the faulum o agana no mundu mundu sach astrolog and faradhune. 
if we're not prepared to learn from the wisdom of the Aborigines in Australia? Are we the better for it? If we're not going to pay attention to what Chief Seattle said about the sky, the land, the rivers, what chance of survival has humanity? In 2013, out of frustration and uh, a desire to think outside the box and uh, giving myself the, 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 the freedom to be guided by the wireless that I inherited, I bought an Arctic truck because I had spent nine years trying to secure planning permission. Wasted nine years and wasted money. So I bought my Arctic truck and with the help of master tradesmen from the area, in my brother's yard, we built a passive house, 730 square feet. And on the 16th of May, 2015, we drove it onto my land, which by pure coincidence happened to be Law Nebrian, St. Brendan's Day. Well, you can start to use a Chinese, Chinese uh, Arctic truck. Not, not, not stand there, Henry. Stand there, Henry. Well, the, the local saying proved true because last year I, I got my parent permission. And <laughs> a battle that took 15 years and at a cost of 25,000 at least was finally over. Is that right that we should have to fight like that to live in our ancestral villages? It's not just a West Kerry problem, it's, it's a rural Ireland problem, a European and an international problem. There may be some sense to this in vast countries in Africa or India, where the nearest hospital is a thousand miles away. That does not apply to Ireland. Why then in Ireland? What are we gaining? What are we losing? In our case, they say, the facilities. Well, we got the facilities in the 60s. We got the water and the electricity. Why then, against our will, move us into towns like Dingle, tearing up green fields where sheep and cattle are roaming, to build 40 houses with the only difference between the first house and the second house, is, is, or the 40 houses is the number, of, and the number on the front door. Look at the expense of that, the waste of petrol, waste of diesel, the cost to the environment. By not prioritising our languages, In archaeological terms, it's like going back and tearing down the Beehifots or the Ohm stones or Gathers Horatory or even Newgrange itself. And in all likelihood, the people that built those spoke Irish, which makes the language more precious a gem than the actual sites. What's this doing to our local accents, our county accents? We're witnessing, as the song goes, a fast-fading treasure. To quote the great Castle Island journalist, he said, I have great respect for the English language, even though I don't speak it myself. <laughs> I speak Hiberno-English, English woven on a Gaelic loom. Where were the likes of John Moriarty and John O'Donoghue go if they were to tap into this hidden wisdom of Hiberno-English speaking people? In the Gael thought that the villages are the breeding god. It's where we got our language, our whatever, our language, our music, our sports. It's where we'll guarantee the natural speaking of the language. The, 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 the river is there. But my great-grandparents, grandparents, my parents, I, the river is flowing. But now there's a stop being put to it. There is a potential solution to this, a fairly workable solution. That would go a long ways towards helping our unacceptable level of homelessness and also would help towards passing on of tradition. A group of us have come together calling ourselves Tauhina Thuhe, the future of the countryside. 
we propose that our villages be given the same status as the estates. We have to have a quarter of an acre to build in our villages. In Dingle Town, in an estate, you can build seven or eight houses. If we got that, we could build small, modest, sustainable houses within those villages. This would alleviate, help to alleviate the, the huge numbers on housing lists and it would help to guarantee the passing on of tradition. It's also important to remember that this is a very popular tourist area. But tourists come here not alone for the scenery, they come for the music and the language as well. Would a cleverer approach to tourism be to put heritage first? And then that would guarantee the passing on the language and the music. And the tourists that will come will return. The time is now to have a serious talk about this. A field of houses is not a village, in the same way the field of trees is not a forest. In a forest, you've, you've the trees depending on the shadows and the, the flowers and the birds and the insects in one another's shadow. It takes generations to build a, a village. You can build a, an estate in six months. The Lakota Indians have a saying, it's the children that matter. In the Irish language, we have a saying, Molonoge, I was took a she. Karnyanoge, I was clean the she. Praise the youth and it will flourish. Disparage the youth and it will wither. I'm the oldest man, second oldest man in my village. The youngest are in their 30s. My great grandparents, my grandparents, my parents, and my generation li have lived in that village. I have four children between the age of 28 and 39, fluent Irish speakers, accomplished musicians, and they are forbidden to live in that village. How can one sit down and stand up and say, enough is enough? Where has common sense got? Gone to. Right, I finish now with a song that was written in 1880 about a naivoig or a corach from the Blasket Islands that won the regatta in Ventry. And at the time, everybody spoke Irish, and it was cool to use English words. And they were so proud of this naivoig that they called it the beauty. So this song is uh, called Beauty Das in the Loin. Uh, which translates into the nice beauty from the island. And it's not a sad song at all. The <laughs> Thank you. 
Bilbao. Thank you very much.